This is sample problem R8-7. Here we have a stress stream plot uh, for this material sample shown here. Um, so this would be a, a Young's modulus value with a slope here. Recalling that the linear portion of this curve, which is right here, so not up in here, represents Young's modulus. So the stress strain diagram for the polyethylene for polyethylene, which is used to sheath coaxial cables, is determined from testing a specimen that has a gauge length of 10 inches. So that's the initial length um, between the two, the two points that will be measured. So that's the gauge length from here to here. If a load P on the specimen develops a strain of 0 0.024 inches, determine the approximate length of the specimen measured between the gauge points. When the load is removed, so the elastic recovery and you're going to have a permanent set of strain because you have gone up into the 0 0.024, so you're up in here, okay, right here, and uh, which is the nonlinear region, okay? So we're going to be looking at a line that comes back this way, parallel to this line. So what do we know about this problem? So remember, uh, Young's modulus um, Hooke's law is this equation right here, right? So what we're saying is the applied stress is equal to the applied strain times a constant we know is Young's modulus. So how are we going to figure out from here uh, what the value of our material is. So if you go back to the graph, right in around 2 KSI, we have a strain. Let's assume that strain is 0 0.004. So remember, that's the rise over the run will give us the slope of this line, OK? So E is equal to sigma over epsilon, which is the strain. So really, that's 2ksi subtract 0, subtract. Let's do this here. OK, little technical glitch there. Uh, Young's modulus is equal to sigma over e. So that's 2ksi minus 0 over what was a strain, 0 0.004, subtract 0. And so this equals 2 over 0 0.004 is equal to 0 0.5 times 10 to the third KSI is the Young's modulus for this polyethylene sample. OK, so the elastic recovery, remember, Basically, we have stress, we have strain, so stress, strain. The curve comes up, we have a linear portion, and then it does this. Okay, and we were somewhere up in here, and basically it's going to come back like this. So remember from the, this, the sample problem in class that this is E, and if we go A, B, C, E is equal to CB, which is the rise, over AB. And what are we interested in? We're interested in the AB, which is this elastic response right here. So AB is equal to CB over E. And what was CB? So CB, if we go back to our question, is around at 0 0.024 inch, it's unloaded. So that's around 3.7 KSI applied stress, normal stress. So we'll go back here. This equals 3.7 KSI over E, which is this value right here, right? So E is 0 0.5 times 10 to the third KSI. All right, and since we're looking for something on the strain, trying to get a strain value here, we're dividing KSI by KSI, so the units cross out. And when you do the math, 
you get 0 0.0074, which is your recovered strain, which is this value right here, 0 0.0074. Okay, so recall this sample is going to go up, it's going to get into its nonlinear response or plastic region, but when we unload it, it's going to come back parallel to the initial young linear response of the material. Okay, so we've just said that this here is 0 0.0074. So the material is going to come back to this point right here. So the next question is really what is the permanent set? set. Ah. So the permanent set is equal to the strain when it was released, which is 0 0.024. Let me just double check that value. Yes, 0 0.024 right here. Subtract 0 0.0074. And what does that equal? 0.0166. So that is the permanent set strain, and that is what is shown right here between this point. If we call this O, this is OA. Okay, so that's the strain. So what was our original strain length, or gauge length, right? Remember E is equal to the change in length over the length. Okay, so the change in length, delta is going to be 10 inches times this permanent set, 0 0.0166, which is equal to 0 0.166. So then the new length of our sample, the length is equal to its original length, 10 inches, plus its new elongation of 0 0.166, which equals 10.166 inches. And that should answer all the questions.